Hello, we're going to use GeoGebra to investigate the derivative of some sinusoidal functions. Uh, so I'm going to start off in the Chrome app here, just in the graphing calculator or graphics view of GeoGebra. Go up to the input bar, type in first function, negative sine of x. There we go. First thing you'll notice is that the graphics view here, the x-axis, isn't conducive to what we're going to be doing with it. The labels aren't great because we're going to be working in intervals of pi over 4. So we can change that by going up to settings right here, clicking on x-axis, and going to the distance, click on that, go to pi over 4. You can just type in pi divided by 4 there, hit enter, and you can see that the labels on the x-axis have changed. So close that. Zoom in a bit. We're only, only interested in the period from 0 to 2 pi right now. Next, we need some points. We're going to come up with some slopes of tangent lines. So there's a bunch of ways you can do this. I like to use the spreadsheet. So we'll go up to the settings menu, go down to view, and turn on a spreadsheet panel. Now we can just enter in the x points that we need. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. First, I'm going to label these, so I'll put x in quotation marks so that GeoGebra does not mistake this for a line y equals x. And I'll call the second column the slope. My pointer is 0, uh, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi by 4. Notice that as I type these in, just the word pi, GeoGebra is recognizing what I mean. Pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. We go. So we're going from zero to approximately 6.28. That looks good. Now I want my slopes. So remember that the slope of the tangent line is the same thing as the value of the derivative at that point. These are equivalent definitions. So I can type in equals f prime or the apostrophe or quotation mark. Uh, and then instead of writing zero, I can refer to the cell A2, uh, which currently contains the value of zero. It tells me that the slope of the tangent line at that point will be negative 1. We go over to uh, that point right there. We can see that makes sense because this whole interval, it looks like the function is decreasing, so we would expect a negative slope. So we can fill out the rest of the table by clicking on this cell. And like any spreadsheet, just to take the square in the bottom right corner, hold your mouse down. Oh, not what I wanted. All right. Hold your mouse down and drag it down like this. There we go. So we can see that the slopes here are repeating. So we're going to have another periodic, maybe even sinusoidal functions. You may also recognize the value 0 0.71. That is a, an approximation of 1 over the square root of 2, which shows up a lot with sinusoidal functions. So we want to take these points, we can actually plot them. You can do this in a few ways, but here's one quick and convenient way. Just select these cells, right click, go to create, and choose a list of points. And GeoGebra has now just plotted all of these values as points on the graphics view. Look at that. So now we can try fitting a function to those points. Go to the input bar here, Let's try cosine of x. We know that's not going to be right, but that might help us see what's actually going on here. So look, cosine of x is 1 at 0, where we want it to be negative 1. Uh, it does go through points c and g. And it's negative 1 at e here, at pi, when we want it to be positive 1. So there's some symmetry going on here. It's mirrored. So maybe if we reflect it in the x-axis by using negative cosine of x, look at that function now goes through all of the points that we graph. And we can confirm this because we want to verify this by using GeoGebra and just typing in f prime of x. You can see GeoGebra is ahead of us. It knows f prime of x is negative cosine of x. Let's graph that. Uh, and you can see that it actually lines up perfectly. Now, of course, this isn't the only possible answer. We could also notice that this function is the sine function, just phase shifted 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians to 
to the right. So another possible answer could be sine of x plus pi over 2, minus pi over 2. There we go, shift to the right. And you can see that lines up perfectly as well. So both of these functions work as the derivative of negative sine of x. They are both um, equivalent definitions. It's just whichever one you choose to use. Most of us choose negative cosine of x because it's a bit easier and a bit nicer to write and manipulate and work with. Uh, but the point of this activity is that you can use tools like GeoGebra to investigate the connection between the algebra and the geometry of what's going on. So if you're working with these functions, trying to find derivatives, and you're not really sure what's happening, uh, you want to look behind the scenes and see how this function and its slopes and tangents are behaving, uh, graph it out, use something like GeoGebra. You can use spreadsheets to create tables of values really quickly. You can plot those points and you can play around with the definitions of the functions until you get a sense of what's actually going on. Uh, so I hope this was helpful.